that it had been optioned for this movie, and I was tremendously excited. But then, over the years, over you know, it, when it, it didn't happen and it didn't happen, and the producer would continually call me, and he'd have several pieces together. And he'd say, I had this actress interested, or we have a screenplay here. Would you like to see it? And I would get excited, and then things would kind of fizzle until uh, about May of 2017, all of a sudden, all the pieces came together at once. They um, were able to get one. Well, Naomi Watts uh, was interested, and, and Daisy Ridley, and the um, strong female, they wanted a strong female director who they found named Claire McCarthy, an Australian woman. And so those three kind of were this glue that, or the, a magnet that attracted all the other pieces into place, and it just sort of, you know, like overnight things things fell into, fell into place and it became a reality. And then I got to go to Prague to watch some of the filming of, of the, um, some of the, the scenes that they did in the studio. And then that was really fun. That was very exciting. That must have been really a delight. And I just want to say before I move on to the audience, it's like the production and the cast were just superb of this film. I thought it was uh, really exciting. And Naomi Watts is a wonderful actress, so it was great. Um, yeah. I. It was not, it's, being an independent film, it was not a large budget film, but I think they just did a stunning job with the, it's visually stunning. Okay. And and the um, the scenes in the castle, um, the like Gertrude's bedroom and the great hall where the final, you know, calamity occurred, all those interior scenes were um, constructed inside a studio near Prague. Um, and which to me was amazing how realistic they made. It was actually a better, um, more more efficient and cost effective for them to construct the sets inside a studio. Um, and then the outdoor scenes and the other the other scenes were shot at a at a castle near Prague. Great. Well, I'm gonna pass the mic around. If that's Here's okay. your sister-in-law. Oh, I'm coming on back. <laughs> oh. Oh, did you want to add? Yeah, yeah. Hi, this is Cindy Reed. The well, I was uh, going to ask <laughs> well, if there was any family hey, member well, here. Audience, hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> um, your nieces will be here this evening for the evening hello. service. But oh my goodness, as you said, it was ten years finally getting this together, and it was amazing right. to watch. Now I've read the first Hamlet. I've read your Ophelia. And now I've seen the movie. What a wonderful experience. Oh, a trifecta. You've done all three. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been wonderful. I, I'm very, very impressed. Lisa, I'm Deanna Cleveland. I'm a friend of Cindy and Denise's. It's nice to meet you by screen. So I don't know how to say the name of the screenwriter. Semi Chalice? Semi Chalice, I think. I don't know if that's male or female. I don't know that She's name. She's a woman. So yeah. I would love to hear from you how you felt seeing, uh, experiencing your novel being made into a screenplay, and did you have input? Uh, was that a collaboration, or do you just turn it over and they find a screenwriter? Yeah, the latter. They, um, they, I. You sign when you're not a famous writer, as I am not and was not even at the time. Um, you you sign away your what's called moral rights, and so you have no control over uh, what what they choose to do with your with your book. Um, and that was fun with me. You know, at the time I thought, well, nothing will ever come of this anyway, possibly. Um, so no, I did not have any control or veto rights the screenplay they were courteous enough to share it with me and um, I uh, it was it was really interesting to see my book turn into a screenplay because of course that's just another layer of interpretation and they left a lot out if you read the book you'll you know that they, they left a lot out and she changed a lot as well um, and um, it, it I would, there were things I really loved about the screenplay. There were some things I, I, I was a little dissatisfied with, but seeing it all come together as the, the movie, I, I was um, I, all my reservations were, were just wiped away. I, 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 I really I really loved it. Um, I think she did a really good job. Thank you. 
I have more questions. I'm sure you have some burning questions. Yeah, just yes. wanted to ask. Oh, wait, could you use the microphone, please? Oh, no. Do you think uh, this is going to go to uh, Netflix and areas like that? Well, it is available for streaming. Um, I think you can stream it on Amazon. I don't know if it's on Netflix, and I, you know, I, I don't know uh, what other formats it's going to be available. More questions? Come right up. Um, as this was a Tuesday movie at the Grand, I didn't realize it was based on a book, and your book, so I haven't gotten a chance to read that. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. okay, prop time. <laughs> there we go! <laughs> Just so you know what to look yeah. for. It has, this is the cover of the tie-in edition, but there's a, a another cover too. And it's very simple, it's called Ophelia. Yeah. Okay. And could you share with yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, okay, one of the, some of the differences, um, a major difference um, between the book and the movie is the, um, the role of Gertrude and Mechtild, as you're, you, you could see that they were both played by Naomi Watts, and in my book, Mechtild is a character, but she's not related to Gertrude, she's not Gertrude's sister. Um, they, they, so they beefed up this Mechtild subplot. And um, in order to give Naomi Watts a bigger role, because she's a very famous and well-known actress, of course, but she would be sort of taking second billing to Daisy Ridley, a much younger actress. And so in order to make it a more, um, a more appealing role for her, they, um, they gave her both roles. And so they, they um, added the, the Mechtel sub. And, and made that a bigger part of the part of the movie. Um, uh, I'm thinking the the ending um, is if you, if you know Hamlet, you know that the ending of the, the movie is is different from Hamlet. Everybody dies, all the same people die, but how they die is you know I don't if you know Hamlet, you might have been as surprised as I was to see. Gertrude pick up that sword and, and nail mm -hmm. Claudius. Um, that, that to me is, is really satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, I, I think of it as a revenge, uh, revenge play, a revenge movie for the Me Too moment because it's, it's, it's not Hamlet. Hamlet gets off scot-free um, on the revenge thing. He's not the one who kills Claudius. Ophelia doesn't kill anybody. Um, but it's it's wronged women. It's Mechtild and Gertrude who are the ones who take revenge against Claudius, who has wronged them both. And so um, that final scene, I, I don't to you, I could I could watch that again and again and again. It was <laughs> bloody, but yet satisfying. And, 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 so I, I enjoyed I enjoyed them making a sort of a Hollywood spectacle out of um, what wasn't in my book at all. That that scene really was only reported, the carnage that ends Hamlet is reported from a distance and it doesn't really come into play in my in my book, but I think they did a lovely job um, adding it. And also in my in my um, book, if you'll, some people were a little disappointed not to see this in the movie, but Horatio plays a much bigger role in helping Ophelia escape from Elsinore and then he shows up again at the very, very end so um, it, it, I was a little sad that, um, that Horatio didn't come through as, as Ophelia's hero quite as much as he does in the book. Um, but the one, re one choice they made, um, which is a good choice, I think, to, they made the choice to prolong the Hamlet and Ophelia romance as long as possible. In my book, Ophelia gives up on Hamlet a lot sooner. She's like, You're, you, know, you, you swore to love me, and you're, you know, you're you're just pursuing the revenge. You know, take choose, and he chooses revenge, and so she leaves. She she cuts off from him at a much earlier point. In the movie, they uh, prolong the romance until the end because that's what the goers want to see. And um, George McKee is a lovely, sweet, endearing Hamlet. So um, I, I was I was glad to see that change too. 
Uh, I'm just speaking of change. I really uh, it's interesting how we as modern people we're always looking back on Shakespeare as this you know set in stone kind of story. So I love to see these kind of alterations of the original because it reminds us that you know back in Shakespeare's time, while he was taking stories and changing them, you know like Romeo and Juliet was an Italian novel and things like that. And so I just really appreciate uh, playing with it instead of treating it so you know a bit over reverently I guess reminding yeah. us that stories yeah. are valuable and things like that so it's really right yeah I think we should all have the freedom to to play with Shakespeare that there's nothing sacrosanct about his plays and he would approve as I think he would approve of taking bits and pieces of of the culture and his plays and other sources and other playwrights and sort of mingling them into a into a new story uh, Maybe one or two more questions. Oh, we got a couple more. Awesome. I like that you've also had some sweet revenge against your tenure committee, but, um, <laughs> as a fellow adjunct. But what have you been doing for the last ten years? Are you still teaching? Are you writing? Like, what's life like uh, now? And hopefully, you'll be getting some more royalty checks too. But I would imagine this has kind of had a little upheaval coming a decade afterwards, and a little unexpected, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it was a lovely surprise, but um, yeah, I, I didn't set out to get revenge against the, the tenure <laughs> committee at Ohio State, but I do take satisfaction in that the books I've written since I've left Ohio State have been read by more people than the academic, dull academic book I wrote, you know, <laughs> that didn't get me tenure. So, I mean, uh, if, if you want to write I've been I've been really gratified to write books that people like to read, and I have written five young adult novels. Um, I can hold I don't have them to hold up, but <laughs> Lady Macbeth's Daughter is also um, based on a Shakespeare play, and then one another Shakespeare themed one is called Love Disguise, and then I've written two um, novels with themes from American history. So um, I'm I, I just continue writing and. Um, with no expectation that any other work will ever get made into a movie, and you just, you know, you write because it's what you do, and, and sometimes you get lucky and it gets published, and sometimes you write for several years without a breakthrough, and so it's it's not a uh, it's not a secure life, but it's a it's a vocation. Kind of. Nope. Any more questions? Any more more questions before we? Sign off. Well, bring the poll. Okay, let's give her let's give Lisa a kind of round of applause. Thank you so much for doing this. We it's special for our audience, and uh, we're, we're going to have another one this evening. And we thanks for sitting in on that. Go home to, or to message all your friends and say, hey, come in and have a nice conversation later on this evening, and uh, come and see the film as well. So. One more round of applause. I'll be in bed oh. after, you know, I'm in Ohio now, so by the time your second, your evening film gets over, it's going to be like one in the morning oh, for me. So you're not gonna... I'm not, I'm not joining you this evening, oh. but you can there's, replay there's this, perhaps. I said something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you so much for coming in this I afternoon. Thank you yes. for uh, watching the movie, and I hope you enjoyed it. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye. What if? Say hi to Denise. Hi, Denise. <laughs> what are we doing this evening? We're having another.